back here in Niagara Falls, New York. There we see the falls at night as the city of Niagara Falls is illuminating and inside the lights have been bright, but boy, have we got it. <laughs> some finishes here at the Seneca Niagara Resort and Casino. We look forward to more finishes. Jarrell, Big Baby Miller, and Nick Cuevas, the heavyweights, going head to head. Now let's head it up to our ring announcer, David Diamante, to meet the fighters. And now, ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring, fighting out of the blue corner from Topeka, Kansas, Go! Nick. Two guns, Guivas. Nothing can stop me. I'm Nick Guivas. A big step up for him. This is his first fight here in 2016. Just five of his 17 fights have come against opponents with above 500 records. He claims that he wants to be a boxer tonight, stay on the outside. And the one item that he told us is stay away from the big baby. Right, he's going to have to box. He's going to have to really move. An interesting story. Stayed away from boxing for 15 years and Ray. Patrick, we asked him what happened, why the long delay, why the long hiatus. He said, guys, life happened. <laughs> yes, he did. He was going ahead and he had a wife and he has three kids, two girls and a boy. Had to provide for them, but had the itch to get back inside of boxing. And at the age of 31, he came back and believes that he can find a way to fluster one. Jarrell Miller, let's meet his adversary. Once again, here's David Diamante. And his opponent making his way to the ring. He'll be fighting out of the red corner. He's escorted by the Seneca Nation Impact Boxing Club, training out of Rochester from Brooklyn, New York. The NABA champ, the undefeated Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Jarrell Big Baby Miller, ranked number 11 by the WBA and the WBO, has yet to go eight rounds. The last time you saw him inside the ring, January 22nd, a vicious seventh round TKO victory over Donovan Dennis and Patrick, the futurist fight for Big Baby. And he says that one day, very soon, he will be a world champion. Have you guys seen the film The Revenant where Leonardo DiCaprio gets mauled by the bear? <laughs> well, tonight's going to be the sequel. Oh. <laughs> because we know who the bear is, but I'm not sure Nick Cuevas is Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't think he'll make it through the night. As we see, Jarrell Miller, very focused. And you know what, Steve? He was quite boisterous when it came to the guys in the division. He talked, he called Tyson Fury a clown. He said, Anthony Joshua's overhyped. He said about Deontay Wilder, no chin. Luis Ortiz, he doesn't respect him at all. So he is a quite confident 27-year-old is Jarrell Miller. And Jarrell Miller from Brooklyn. He's big, he's bombastic, and Ray, he's an introvert. And Not really. <laughs> and earlier we had an opportunity, our very own Serafina caught up with the man that they call Big Baby. I'm here with Big Baby Miller. Jarrell, there's a lot of confusion in the heavyweight division these days. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, a lot of these guys ain't fighting top prospects or they're not even fighting top opponents. You know, I mean, we have Vladimir Klitschko and Tyson. They're about to do a 12-round, 30-punch hump fest. Nobody want to see that. I don't want to see that. So, listen, I mean, who else is there? We got uh, Deontay Wilder. He's going to fight a watch, though, Chris Ariola. So, these guys are just going in there for paydays. They don't want to fight no top prospects. I dare you to call my name. At the end of the day, it's going to be my time, and soon they're going to have to fight me, and I'm going to break their jaw. Sounds good, and good luck to you tonight, Jero. Thank you, Sarah, as the time is almost upon us. Steve, take us through the numbers. And I think the big number with Jarrell Miller is that big number. He promised us he'd come in at 285. I guess the weight loss process has begun. He weighed in at 283. Let's take a look at our rules for this 10-round heavyweight matchup. No standing eight count. The boxer cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight. A 10-point must system is in effect. Three judges scoring this matchup at a mandatory eight count after the knockdown. And now let's send it up to our ring announcer, David Diamante, for a main event. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, good evening and welcome to the Seneca Niagara Resort and Casino here in beautiful Niagara Falls, New York for the championship boxing on CBS Network's main event of the evening. Brought to you by Greg Cohen Promotions in association with Salida Promotions and David Schuster's Winner Take All Productions. Sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Masfina, and Maxim Group. 
Sound investments, solid relationships. This bout is sanctioned by the Seneca Nation of Indians Athletic Commission, Chairman Scott Snyder, Vice Chairman Justin Schaap, Regulatory Commissioner Kim Sumbler, and the NABO, President Francisco Paco Barcarcel, and your supervisor ringside, Jerry Bolin. Your three judges scoring this contest from ringside will be Don Ackerman, Eric Marlinski, and Tom Schreck. And at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring will be Rich Pekosdi. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled for the vacant NABO Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he wears the black with red and white trim. He weighed in at 229.6 pounds. His professional record, 12 victories against three defeats. He has two draws and nine wins coming by way of knockout. From Topeka, Kansas, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nick Two Guns Guivas. Guivas. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. He wears the black and turquoise. He tipped the scales at already 283 pounds. His professional record, 16 victories, no defeats. He has one draw and 14 wins coming by way of knockout. He's ranked number 15 by the IBF, number 12 by the WBA, and ranked number 11 in the world by the WBO. He is the current NABA champion. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brooklyn, New York, Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Two seconds. Mouthpiece in. Okay, gentlemen, you receive your instructions in the dressing room. Expect a clean bout out of both of you. Obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves now. Go back to your corner. We'll get going. Look at the size difference. Jarrell Big Baby Miller is a mammoth of a man. He is the NABA heavyweight champion looking to add the NABO title to his impressive resume. Nick Guivas, two guns. Boy, oh boy, he needs a full assault in order to derail Jarrell Miller. Yeah, this here physically looks like a matchup. Two guns, more like two water pistols against the bazooka. Uh, there's actually been talk of creating a super heavyweight division just for this reason. I'll, I'll say this for 283 guys. I don't know if you agree or disagree. I, I actually think Jarrell Miller actually wears it fairly well. Yes, he's a mammoth of a man, and he does not look... Uh, flabby around the abdominal region. He looks rather tight and he looks fit, ready to go. And he told us that he's not gonna let Nick Rivas off the hook whatsoever. Well, what I'd like to see out of him tonight is to show a little bit of his boxing skills early in the fight, use his jab. Let's see how he, his footwork is. He says he has the best footwork in boxing, but it is an area that he's had to work on uh, from the transition from kickboxing. And let's see what he looks like in those departments because we know he's big and we know he can punch. When getting to that kickboxing background, he actually took a head kick from Mirko Krokop, who back in the day was an unbelievable fighter in combat sports. And he went on the road a lot to challenge a lot of top kickboxers. So he claims that fighting anybody is no sweat off his back because he's already been there, done that, Steve. No, the one thing, he has a natural fighting instinct. He's very comfortable in that ring. And unlike a lot of American heavyweights who are athletes first, boxers second, this guy's actually a natural combat athlete. But I see him at 283. While it doesn't look that bad, you take a look at the ability to strike quickly and have some quickness. I think you've already seen he looks a little bit ponderous in there tonight. We also claim that the goal is to get to you know 260 that is his ideal weight but one thing that he did inform us is he didn't like the fact of he was trying to cut weight and and get to a quicker you know 265 270 he claimed that he got to 277 and he needed to go and get an iv because he was drained and he needed to come back up so that weight cutting wasn't going too well but so far it has been so good against nick Rivas with about a minute to go in the fight in the round Ray was at this point last year, right around 12, 13 months ago at this very same venue, he blew out XL Holmes in one round. He actually weighed just 255.
for that fight. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why he put on all this extra poundage in the subsequent months and year. Well, Miller is with his jab. Grievous is staying on the outside as he wanted to, but there's a clubbing right hand. Oh, by a body shot. shot. Putting down Nick Grievous, and he goes back to the corner, does big baby. Richard Bacosi counting, and that hurt him. That left hook underneath the right arm to the rib cage, and we heard that thought over here, and now Big Baby going for the kill. And he really didn't even put that much on that left hook. And a right hand putting down Nick Guivas as Jarrell Miller right on the ear of Guivas. Guivas is going to rise to his feet. Could he be saved by the ball? No, I'm not talking about Zach Morris and Mario Lopez. That is the end of the first round. Steve, let's take a look at some of the work from Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Well, we take a look at the obvious advantage in size and strength and also just overall ability. And you can see right now Big Baby Miller digging a left hook to the body and down goes Guivas. That's the first of two knockdowns and to end the round, overhand right. And that right there probably an accumulation of blows as Nick Guivas starting to figure out he's not in Kansas anymore. And no, he's not in Patrick. It seemed like that sort of, of a messed with the equilibrium of Nick Weavis. Yeah, you know, he's just not at the same level of, of Big Baby. And Big Baby really didn't even put that much on that left hook, and he dropped it. You know, Thurman Thomas was a tremendous running back back in the day with the Buffalo Bills, and he ran a lot. And Nick Weavis has got to run in order to sort of preserve it and get some rounds along with throwing the jab. Well, I think the issue was with Guivas. You know, quite frankly, matched up physically, Guivas looks like a very pudgy cruiserweight. Uh, it's not only just the difference in size, though, it's also the difference in talent. You get the sense that Big Baby Miller could probably end this fight at any time he wants. I, I agree. I think he was actually taking it, you know, at a very slow pace and an easy pace, and he wasn't even really digging those body punches that hard, as hard as he could. Well, what I like about Jarrell Miller is everything is coming off the jab. I mean, he really sticks his jab out there and extends. No, right, you're right. See, there's a technical command that he has. He actually looks like a fighter. He's just not a big guy. Stumbles upon a gym, and there's another body shot that sends down Guivas. And Guivas in trouble again, and he's got to be thinking, how much more do I have to take of this as Richard Procosdi counting as Guivas is going to rise to his feet oh. as he beats the count. Barely. <laughs> and big baby Miller is going to go in to try to get a big knockout victory. Now we're seeing some theatrics here as he digs right to the body with the left hook and Jarrell Miller darting inside. Now he's feeling real good about himself. A body shot attacking Nick Weavis and Pagosdi tell him to keep it up. And now that's a veteran to Nick Weavis. He's saying that it was that he was hit low. Well, Maybe he's buying himself some time. Ray, quite frankly, I think what he's doing is staving oh, off the execution. Simply put, Big Baby Miller is simply too big, too strong, and too skilled for two guns. Well, if you're Nick Rebus, you've got to be wondering, Patrick, I have got to find a way to maneuver around every inch of this ring. Yeah, there's really no way he can do it. He doesn't have the foot speed, the hand speed, the skill. I said it's like the film The Revenant, and that's when DiCaprio gets mauled by a bear, and that's what's happening to Cuevas. The end might be near as Jarrell Miller looking to put the NABL championship around his waist, stick into the body left hook, and this one could be over. Richard Pacosti waves it off, and there is Big Baby with the second round stoppage over Nick Cuevas. That was a one-sided demolition compliments of the man they call Big Baby. Well, this was a physical mismatch going in, and then it was a mismatch of a fight. The one thing we have to think about, he did what he was supposed to tonight. Jarrell Miller at 283, how does he stack up against the much bigger, better heavyweights like Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, we take a look at some of the action uh, from this past fight here. Even Louis Ortiz, Povetkin, Parker, Ruiz. Against Guivas, he was able to just walk right through to the front door and just knock on the doorbell at any time because there was not a lot of resistance and the obvious size difference. But I, I think the key for Miller against some of these other heavyweights, these blue chip marquee guys, is to be able to close distance and be able to dig left hooks to the body like that. But again, Patrick, can he do it at 283? 
Well, you know, that's hard to say. I mean, he looked a little slow of foot in this, but you really can't tell by this fight uh, whether he's good at this weight. Sometimes, you know, weight, if it's good weight, it's okay. If you're still quick and big, it, it's okay. And time will tell. It is Big Baby right, Miller who improves his record to 17-0-1 with 15 victories by way of knockout. And now let's send it up to our ring announcer, David Diamante, who has... Ladies and gentlemen, referee Rich Pacosi calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, one minute and 26 seconds of round number two. Your winner by TKO, he's still undefeated, and he's the new NABO heavyweight champion from Brooklyn, New York, Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Jarrell Miller remaining undefeated as he adds the NABO championship along with the NABA championship. Patrick, he continues to rise up the world rankings. Yeah, he, he mowed right through uh, Cuevas. And I think it's, for him, it's going back to the gym, working on his jab, working on his footwork, and trying to improve in those areas. So when he gets in with the better fighters, he can show he has the skills to go the distance if necessary. Yeah, absolutely, completely agree with you, Patrick. And we'll come back and have an opportunity to speak with Jarrell Big Baby Miller and close out what has been an eventful evening of boxing here in Niagara Falls. Back here in Niagara Falls, New York at the Seneca Niagara Resort and Casino, Jarrell Big Baby Miller finishing off Nick Weavis. Patrick, we're gonna take a look at some of the work by the Big Baby. Yeah, here he is, he's gonna go down to the body and right there you knew this fight wasn't gonna last very long. And he did a nice job continuing to pressure Nick Weavis, throwing an array of shots and then just continuing to dig to the body, ripping shots. And there's that right hand followed by the left hook right underneath to the rib cage. And then Jarrell Miller sensing that the end could be near, mixing up the attack with the left hook, putting down Nick Weavis. And there we see the victorious Jarrell Big Baby Miller remaining perfect. And now we'll send it up to our broadcast colleague. Here's Steve Kim with the victorious Jarrell Miller. Ray, thank you very much here with the Big Baby. Very simply, was it as easy as it looked? I mean, nothing is as easy as it looks sometimes, you know what I mean? Let me get down to business real quick, Pop. 
Listen, nothing as easy as it's simple. It's always going to be work, man. You can't sleep on anybody. Anybody got a lucky punch. He caught me with a couple shots, but, you know, I know that wakes me up, and I like that kind of stuff. Jarrell, I know you're penciled in for a fight at Rochester in August. After that, do you believe you're ready to go big game hunting in the heavyweight division? Well, let me, first, let me say all glory to God. You know, I want to thank all my family from Rochester, Brooklyn, Rhode Island, Connecticut that came down to come and support me. Everybody out in Florida, Luxury PR, Maria, Anthony, everybody out there. And, of course, listen, I want to give a big shout-out to my wife. She's somewhere over there. She's a big supporter. Been with me since my pro debut. I love her to death, man. Without her, man, us fighters, you know, we don't have that support system. We can't do it. But let's talk about the heavyweight division for a second. Yeah. And that's what you want to hear about. For you, it's incident that happened with Berman Stavern, right? Listen, boy, you lucky I ain't knock your doodle dreads off your head and stuff it down your throat. Well, see, we're here now. But Trevor Bryan, another heavyweight, you know Trevor Bryan, yeah, of course. Yeah, Listen, yeah. he has to be the best slap boxer in the heavyweight division. Can't turn the punch over the crack of walnut. But let's go to Vladimir Klitschko and Tyson Fury now. Listen, ain't nobody want to see a 12-round hump fest again. But listen, I gladly take the win of that fight if you did call my name. And let's go to Pavetkin and, Vladimir, uh, 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 Pavetkin and Wilder. Listen, I can see it now. New York versus Alabama, North versus South. We can call it the Civil War. Ah, baby, see, I like this man. This guy like this stuff. But listen, though, he ain't from Alabama, though. We got to take the A L off Alabama and take the A's out for the B. Cause he a bum. He from Bumtown, and I'm gonna knock your lights out. And I ain't forget about Anthony Joshua either. He talking all that smack about Brazil over there. Brazil ain't got no heart or no nuts. But I bet you won't talk to me like that. I'll make you swallow your goddamn teeth. Call my name. So there you have it. That's Darrell Miller. One day he'll open up. Ray, back to you. Well, he's a pretty shy guy, isn't he, Steve? <laughs> And Patrick, well, he is boisterous. He believes in himself, calling out Vermeer, the bird, Klitschko, Fury, Pavetkin, Wilder. He wants to fight Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua. Patrick, he wants anybody and everybody. Well, that's the way a fighter is supposed to be. He, 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 he wants to get into fighting, so he become a world champion. So he, he needs to think this way. And he needs to work hard and keep working hard to work on his skills so when he gets to that level, he can win those fights. And you know what? He can punch, so he has the potential to win the world title. Well, he has the sizzle, and we're seeing a little bit of the steak. We need to see a little bit more sample size, Absolutely. but Jarrell Miller is a force to be reckoned with, and without question will be in the top 10 in the heavyweight division. And also, he's a down-to-earth young man.